Pani Józef też z tego, że jest już swoją szkołą, dyrektora naszego wielkiego. No i z naszej szkoły wyszło dwóch ministrów spraw zagranicznych. Jeden do Atalicy jest w Niemczech, drugi tak jest w Rotschwitz. O małym filmie mówiliśmy trzeciego, czyli nie jak jego rodzin. Wszystko przed a Nie będę już przeszkadzał na spotkaniu, bo tutaj pan ambasador życie zostawił z przepraszami. Zostawiam wszystkich. Witam serdecznie. Przebywa. Zapraszam. I siadajcie. Pan Dzień dobry. Zawsze pan jest jeszcze. Ja tutaj jestem. Ja to jest nie nic najsłynniejszy koalicyjny w całej Polsce, więc naprawdę jest wielki zaszczyt dla mnie, także tutaj z Wami. Ja właśnie zamierzałem mówić o jakiej jest, jaka jest misja moja tutaj w Polsce, jako ambasador amerykański, I, ale, ale nawet ci całkiem mówiła, że ja mam mówić po angielsku. I chyba no, to jest dlatego, że jest tak bolesne do świecia, jak ten słuchacz do mnie mówiąc po polsku. Ale też mówiła, że, że byłoby bardzo dobre ćwiczenie dla Was, gdybym, ja, gdybym mówił po, po, po angielsku. So, if there are no objections, I will speak uh, in English. But, but if you do not understand, just raise your hand and I will try in, in, in Polish. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, for having me here uh, with you uh, today. Uh, I came to Krakow yesterday for uh, a, a two-day visit, and I've been to Krakow many times before. The first time I came to Krakow was in 1984, so long before uh, any of you were born. And uh, it was in a very difficult time in relations between the United States and Poland. It was during the Cold War, uh, during the communist times. Uh, the, the American diplomat in Poland was something very special, but also very difficult because the relations between our two countries were so bad. So every time I would leave my apartment in Warsaw or I would travel to Krakow or to Gdańsk, I would always have secret police behind me, following me uh, every place uh, I would go. And every time I would meet, meet a Polish friend or, or visit uh, somebody in their apartment, uh, afterward, the secret police would always come to them and they would want to know why are you meeting with Americans, they are our enemy. And it was, it was very difficult because it, it made me afraid to want to meet Polish people because I didn't want to get them in trouble with the police. And so it was a very difficult uh, time in which to do uh, our, our job. Nevertheless, in spite of all of that, uh, I always felt very much at home here in Poland. There are many, many Poles who live in the United States. I'm sure some of you have some family who, who live there. There are about 10 million Americans who trace their roots back here in, uh, in Poland. And it's that close ties between our families, between friends, uh, between universities, uh, between the church in the United States and the church here that has really built a very strong foundation for the relations between Poland and the United States, even when the government was uh, uh, not so favorable to, uh, to us here in Poland. So I left in 1986, uh, came back seven years later in 1983 to a completely new country. Poland was free, it was democratic, the economy was beginning to grow very quickly, and Poland very much wanted to join NATO. And so working in the embassy, in Warsaw at that time, I worked very hard uh, to prepare the way for Poland to join NATO, and we finally succeeded. Poland was able to join in 1999, and it was a huge achievement that 10 years after uh, democracy came to Poland, Poland was admitted into this very important military alliance, which I am certain will guarantee Poland's security uh, far, into the, uh, far into the future. So I left uh, Poland in 1997. I never dreamed I would be able to come back, but last year, uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton asked me if I would like to come back to Poland uh, to serve as ambassador. And it was a, a dream uh, come true for me that I had the chance to do that. And I arrived here in November, 
And it's a very important thing for me to be able to go around and visit uh, parts of Poland as ambassador to keep that friendship that I discovered way back in 1984, to keep that friendship alive and, and, and prospering. Because when you're friends with a country, it's kind of like when you're married. Uh, you, 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 are, you feel secure and you're, you're glad to be in that marriage, but you have to work at it every day. You can't take it uh, for granted that uh, your wife is always going to love you. You have to show her every day uh, that uh, you are worth loving. And, and so it's a very important part of my job uh, to make sure that the relationship that exists between our two countries continues to be strong and, uh, and to grow. And to do that, I concentrate, and my team uh, in the U.S. Embassy, we concentrate on three different uh, areas that I think are the most important for that friendship between our two countries. The first is uh, security. Since 1989, uh, we have been working very hard to make sure that Poland feels secure so that Poland will never again experience the, some of the terrible things that have happened uh, in Polish history, whether it was the partition of, York, uh, of Poland that uh, removed Poland from the map uh, for 123 years, or the horrible things uh, that happened in Poland uh, during World War II, to what happened after World War II, where Poland was controlled uh, by a, a, Soviet, a Soviet domination. It's very important to American interests that none of that happens again in Europe or in Poland. A lot of American soldiers have died uh, trying to correct uh, security problems in Europe, and we want to avoid that ever happening again. So that's why security is a very important part of our relationship. And to do that, obviously Poland is in NATO, and that's uh, the most important piece, I think, for Polish uh, uh, security. Uh, but we also work uh, outside, outside of NATO to make sure we have a good relationship directly between Poland in the United States. Back in November, we opened, uh, for the first time ever, a permanent U.S. military presence in, on Polish soil uh, in the Wasp Air Base, uh, which is just outside of Wuj. Now, there are only 10 uh, American Air Force personnel there. It's a very small number, but that 10, uh, group of 10 uh, soldiers, uh, uh, airmen, uh, will organize regular exercises that will bring several hundred uh, American military officials to Poland every year for, for exercises. Looking a little farther into the future, we're also going to be opening uh, on Polish soil with the Polish government a, an installation to defend Europe against missiles that could be fired from Iran, uh, from elsewhere in, uh, in the Middle East or, uh, or Asia. And uh, that will feature the stationing of two to three hundred American troops on Polish soil uh, to help uh, uh, keep that missile installation uh, up and running. So this, again, is different from Soviet times, where the Soviet army was here. No one in Poland ever asked the Soviet army to come. Uh, in this case, the Polish government did ask the United States uh, to put these military uh, personnel and facilities here. And, uh, and so we're glad to do that because we, we think it will strengthen our security relationship. Uh, the second major focus that I work on is, uh, and my mission works on, is our economic relationship between the United States and Poland. And I think here there is a lot more work for us to do. Uh, all of the trade between the United States and Europe, only 1% of that is between the United States and Poland. So something is significantly out of balance because Poland is a much bigger country than 1% of, uh, of the European Union. So we have a job, uh, I think, to bring that more into balance. And so we're very eager uh, to promote greater American investment in Poland. We very much welcome Polish investment in the United States. 10,000 Americans in the United States working now get their jobs from Polish investment in the United States. And we would like that to increase. Of course, there's a big American business presence here in Mama Polska. Uh, we know that IBM, uh, Sabre, Google, uh, and many other, uh, Motorola, many other American companies are here and are very happy to be here because Polish employees are hardworking, smart, and very innovative. And so we're trying to promote a greater uh, 
U.S. investment group through that, because we think it's in uh, both of our countries' interests to do that. A, spe a special issue uh, in our <coughs> relationship is in energy, and we're very strongly supportive of Poland's efforts to develop different sources of energy, so it's not just dependent on one country for, uh, for its energy. And so we're really glad that American companies are here trying to explore for shale gas, gas mucoving, uh, no, uh, 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 as well as we're looking forward to having American businesses partner with uh, the, the Polish uh, uh, businesses in, in establishing nuclear power here, as well as other kinds of alternative energy uh, supplies like green and, uh, and the solar, uh, solar power. So we think with American technology and experience, we can have a good foundation for working uh, with Poland in the area of energy. Um, the third uh, step we work on is democracy. Uh, and that uh, it owes to Poland's a really rich experience in becoming a democracy um, against some very difficult odds and becoming a democracy without shedding, uh, without any, shedding any blood. Uh, Poland's success in establishing itself as a democracy in 1989, we think is a really good example for other countries around the world that are having a much harder time, including in this neighborhood. Uh, Belarus uh, is not a democracy. It's hard to be optimistic about it, but we think Poland, uh, Poland's experience, Poland's advice, uh, and Poland, Poland's activism diplomatically can have a really important impact in promoting democracy in places like Belarus. Ukraine is also an example. Ukraine is not as uh, in, 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 in as bad a position as Belarus is, but still, it has a lot more work to do uh, to become a democracy. And we think that Poland can be uh, a really good example, a really good source of leadership. But it's not just about this neighborhood. We think in the Middle East, in the Arab world, where the stirrings of democracy are beginning now, as well as in places like Burma, and other, uh, other places in Asia, uh, we think Poland can be a very good example uh, to how to become a, a free market, how to become a democracy in a way that improves security in the, uh, in the world. Democracy is a huge challenge uh, that we've been trying to work on in the United States uh, for over 230 years, and we're still not perfect. We still have many improvements that we need to make uh, to, uh, to Ourself. Uh, at the very beginning uh, of our uh, life as a democracy in the United States, in our Constitution identified uh, as an important goal of that Constitution to create a more perfect union. And that means that uh, we're never perfect. Uh, if we're trying to get close to perfect. Uh, we'll probably never get there. But we have to keep working at it. And that's true of uh, every single democracy. In the United States this month, we're celebrating Black History Month. And this is uh, to bring lots of attention to the very particular history uh, of African Americans in the United States, who, as you know, uh, came to the United States as slaves uh, in the uh, uh, 17th, 18th, uh, and uh, 19th century. And it was really uh, only very recently that African Americans were given fully guaranteed rights in our democratic system. Um, we couldn't really call ourselves a democracy if so many people were not able to participate uh, in our, our government. And so we've really been making steady but strong progress over the past uh, uh, a few decades uh, to make it possible uh, for African Americans to participate uh, more fully in our democratic life. And we're very proud uh, in the United States that an important milestone in that struggle was the election of Barack Obama as president uh, in 2009. And we think that it's a sign of the progress uh, that we are continuing to make uh, on this issue to make our society uh, fully inclusive of, uh, of everybody so that everybody does have an equal opportunity to participate in our government and to make economic success and to otherwise contribute uh, to our society. And this is a challenge that every democracy faces. In some respects, in Poland, um, you had it a little bit easier because Poland uh, uh, does not have a lot of uh, minorities. 
I said, the, the vast majority of people uh, in Poland are of Polish descent. Uh, the vast majority of people have the same religion. Uh, they, are, uh, they are Catholic. And the vast majority of people have a very similar kind of experience. The family has been here uh, for many, many generations. But one thing I've learned in the 30 years that I've been working as a diplomat is the world is getting very smaller, uh, a lot smaller. And so and that is true in Poland. One of the things I noticed since I came back here is how much more diverse uh, Polish political life is. There are now uh, two members of the parliament who are uh, from Africa. Uh, and they speak Polish and they do very well uh, in, in the parliament. This would have been unthinkable for me when I was here uh, back in the 1980s. There are growing numbers of different religious minorities. Uh, there are growing numbers of different ethnic minorities. And so as the world gets smaller, as Poland becomes more integrated into Europe and the rest of the world, your society is going to become a lot more diverse. Uh, it's going to have to open up uh, to different traditions and different values and somehow bring them all together into one uh, society. And it's a very difficult challenge for democracies to do. So as you grow up and move into the workplace and, and finish your education, uh, it's very important for you uh, to look for ways to help bring everybody together uh, when you meet people of a different point of view or a different religion. Because if you don't do that, uh, you're going to have a much harder time uh, in succeeding as a democracy. So that we have had a difficult time, uh, although ultimately successful in the, uh, in the United States. So I think I will uh, uh, end my remarks there. I would be really happy to take your questions on anything you want to uh, ask, uh, any criticism or any ideas, uh, anything. I'm really open uh, to, uh, to listen to your comments and uh, your questions. Może być polskim, a po angielskim tutaj jest wasz, wasz wizyt. Dziękuję bardzo.
So uh, last week, uh, a, a group of Republican and Democratic uh, members of our Congress indicated uh, a new framework, announced a new framework for reforming our immigration law uh, to make it more liberal in terms of, uh, of allowing people who have been here, especially younger people, uh, to give them a path, whether it's the Green Act or, or some other uh, uh, title, uh, to make it possible for them to stay and become contributing members of our, uh, of our society. An important uh, dimension to this, from my perspective, is um, our visa law. Uh, one of the uh, questions I get all throughout Poland is why do Poles need visas uh, to travel to the United States? And that is, it's because of our law. Uh, to, to apply for a visa, that whether a country needs visas or not to come to the United States, um, it's determined by some very uh, specific rules in our law. It's, it's a lot like applying for a driver's license. You, you need uh, to meet certain qualifications, and if you meet them, you get the driver's license. And if you don't meet them, you don't get the driver's license. And it doesn't matter if we like the country or don't like the country or agree with them or have good or bad relations. It's all about meeting these requirements in the, uh, in the law. And Poland uh, meets almost all of the requirements to participate in the uh, program that gets rid of the visa requirement, except for one. And that's um, a country can have no more uh, than 3% of its people who apply for visas be refused. And right now, the number of Poles uh, who are refused visas is, is about 9 or 10%. And so that, because of that, the um, uh, Poland does not, does not qualify for the program. However, uh, we're working with our Congress, and here's where the immigration reform line is quite important. Um, we're trying, Poland's friends in our Congress are trying to change the law so that if a number of applicants from a country who are refused visas is less than 10% instead of less than 3%. They can participate in this program. We hope the Congress will pass this law. President Obama and very much would like the Congress uh, to pass the law. And if it does, we will then be able to move forward uh, to include Poland in, in this program for Poles will not require visas to go to the United States. But I can't predict you. Trying to predict in our Congress is very difficult. Thanks for your question. Colleague, this is Charles Bess. I have a question. Is how could the U.S. could exactly help us with uh, exploring our resources? And I have I think there's an opinion in Polish media that uh, it's just too expensive this exploration of shale gas. And how does it look exactly in the U.S.? Well, in our experience, I mean, certainly shale gas has revolutionized uh, the energy business in the United States, and within. 10 years as a result of uh, the shale gas revolution, uh, the United States will probably be completely uh, energy independent, which is a huge uh, strategic success for us if we were able to do that, because American reliance on the Middle East, uh, which is very politically unstable and, 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 and risky, uh, has caused huge problems for our economy over the years. Uh, our experience in the United States is that the best way to develop any resource is to let the free market and to let the businesses uh, uh, develop that. And I think that's the Polish approach as well. So I think Poland has been very open to inviting in not only American companies, but lots of other companies who have experience in looking for shale gas and developing it. Um, no one really knows how much shale gas is in Poland. And so I think we have to give this process a few more uh, years. Uh, I know the American companies who I talk to regularly are very excited. They think there's a lot here uh, to, uh, to develop. Not every company thinks that. Uh, Exxon, Mobil, Hatton here, they decided they, 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 they wanted to pull out and go elsewhere. Uh, but they are in the minority. Chevron, uh, ConocoPhillips, Marathon Oil, and several other companies believe that there's a great deal of uh, promise here. So I think it's important for Poland uh, to make sure that government regulations uh, make it possible, to make, make it easy for these businesses to come uh, to do exploring. Uh, obviously, if there is 
shale gas could develop, uh, Poland will want to ensure that it profits from that because it's on its territory. And so I know the government is planning to come up with a new uh, law to decide how much of the profits from shale gas the Polish government will be able to, uh, uh, to keep. And they will definitely keep uh, uh, a, big, uh, uh, a big part of it. Uh, but I just think that until we know how much is here, uh, I would recommend that, that the Polish government do everything it can uh, to make it easier for these businesses to explore and, and, and find out how much is here. And once we know how much is here, uh, then uh, to work out an agreement with these companies uh, to ensure that Poland will, will get the profits uh, that the government has had. As far as, as, as far as I'm concerned, we're working in different places in the world, like Bahamas, in South Africa, Lithuania, and Poland as well. And uh, my question is, which of the countries do you enjoy most and why? Well, that's an easy one. <laughs> the country I enjoy most is the place where I've worked three times, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's here uh, in Poland. And, and why I really like it here is because, uh, well, on, on different levels, uh, Poland, uh, really the most important things in my personal life have happened while I worked in Poland. So when I got married, uh, the first uh, place I worked with my wife was here in Poland. So we started our life together here in Poland. Uh, then uh, 11 years later, when we decided to start a family, uh, our, uh, our son was born uh, while we were uh, living in, in Poland. And uh, now uh, to be back in the country as, as ambassador, it's, it's, it's a great job to have. And then uh, it's, it's on a personal level uh, just so rewarding to be here. But also, looking from a more historical perspective, when you look at, at what has happened in Poland um, over the last uh, 30 years, uh, it's, 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 it's really a miracle in so many respects. Uh, and uh, I think the Polish experience in going from a, a, an economy that was in terrible condition uh, to go from a political system uh, that was very repressive, very anti-democratic, and in the course of, of just a, a, what, the less than 30 years, uh, to become one of the most vibrant economies in Europe, uh, to become one of the strongest democracies uh, in the world, uh, it's, it's just a miraculous thing to see and, and, to, and to experience uh, every single day uh, living here. So I, I think that's really why I What is the biggest challenge you expect to have in Poland? The, the biggest challenge, I think, um, is, um, it's, it's interesting. Uh, in the 90s, when I worked here, um, Poland had just uh, managed to uh, escape uh, Soviet domination, Soviet control, and so Poland was very uh, eager uh, to establish its security so that it would not be dominated again by another country, and so um, automatically the Polish leadership in the 1990s uh, looked for that guarantee from the United States, and that's why we worked very closely with Poland uh, to bring uh, uh, Poland into NATO, into a very close security relationship uh, with, uh, with the United States. So now uh, that Poland is much more secure, it's in NATO, uh, over the past uh, 10 years or so that Poland's been a member of the European Union. Um, there's been a lot of money coming from the European Union into Poland. Billions and billions of euros, and you can see it everywhere, in the highways, in the schools, uh, and various technology that's come to Poland. And so I, I think because of the economic benefits that Poland has won from its membership in the European Union, uh, that Polish politics, uh, Polish uh, international affairs tends to concentrate on its relationship in Europe. And so that's a good thing because the United States is a very strong supporter of a united, integrated Europe. But it, it, it creates a, a bigger challenge to, to just remind that you know, the United States is an important friend of, uh, of Poland also. And we want to work very hard to keep that friendship uh, uh, going. So obviously, the American government is not providing tens of billions of euros to, uh, to build uh, highways and, and uh, improve schools. But uh, we, uh, I think that the security uh, 
and then the economic ties between Poland and American businesses in the United States are an important part to, to, to develop. And so my, my biggest challenge is to, I think, show the continuing benefits of that uh, relationship with the United States. Thank you. I have one more question about uh, right now there's a conflict in Mali and uh, also the, uh, the, the migrant friends is fighting right now, also the US uh, takes part. And I have a question, do you know what the United States is going to do there? I don't know, it's going to be like Afghanistan or Iraq or there's any strategy they're going to do there? Well, we're, we're really concerned as our many countries uh, uh, in Europe as well as in Africa that uh, in Places where the government is not so strong, or where the security institutions are not so strong, like in northern Mali, uh, that it becomes very easy for terrorist organizations uh, like those linked to Al Qaeda uh, to operate in these territories, much like uh, Al Qaeda operated in Afghanistan uh, more, than, uh, more than 10 years ago. And uh, so we very much support. Uh, France decided that. Uh, Obviously, wanted to intervene militarily to help the Malian government establish better control um, over this territory in the, uh, in the north. So we very much support French. Uh, we share our French uh, French goals uh, to re-establish uh, security in that part of the, uh, of the country. Uh, France has asked us for some military and intelligence support, and uh, we've been able to provide that. However, we are not going to be sending uh, American troops uh, to be on the ground. In fact, it seems like the French have been quite successful uh, in their goals. And uh, uh, we're not looking, you know, the United States has been in two wars uh, for the last 10 years. And we're not looking to get into any more wars. In fact, uh, we're looking to in fact, end wars uh, 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 as soon as we can uh, without endangering uh, security. So we, we have full confidence in what the, the French have been able to. <laughs> From your experience, what's the general opinion of Americans in the world of Poland? I'm sorry, the opinion of Poland. American opinions of Poland. Well, uh, Americans, uh, Americans who live in Poland or Americans in the United States? In the United States. The uh, people have really, great, first of all, because there are 10 million people in the United States who have Polish roots, uh, everybody feels like they know some piece of, uh, uh, some piece of Poland. And uh, I remember when I first worked here in the 1980s, uh, our president at the time was President Reagan. He spoke very passionately about uh, Poland, Polish freedom, Poland's drive to democracy, and that awakened a lot of interest and enthusiasm in the United States about what was possible in Poland. And then uh, when Poland became a democracy in 1989, people were so impressed with uh, how successful Poland was in a very short time in creating this, uh, this democracy. And uh, Americans through the 90s uh, were really involved in helping to build up Poland's democracy. There were a lot of organizations who worked here in the business sphere, in human rights, and non-governmental organizations. And these organizations developed a, a, a very close relationship uh, with Poland. And then they went back home to report about uh, uh, what a great success this country, uh, this country is. And today, uh, Poland has a reputation of being the only economy in Europe over the past five years that has grown every single, uh, uh, every single year. No other country in Europe has done that. And the, uh, so people are very impressed with, the, uh, with what's happening in Poland. Poles are also uh, admired in the United States for being very close to military allies of the United States. Uh, every time uh, the United States has been involved uh, in a war like Iraq or Afghanistan, uh, Poland immediately has agreed to, uh, uh, to help uh, the United States and to be there to have its troops uh, there in the war. Just last weekend, I went to the funeral of a, a Polish soldier who died uh, in Afghanistan. And uh, although my heart was, was very heavy, uh, I'm still so impressed that, uh, that, that the 
Poland is such a good ally of the United States. And I think most Americans um, understand and appreciate that uh, very, uh, very much. So the opinion of the United States in, in, in of Poland is very, very high.
I really like uh, I really like Seattle in, in, in Washington State. Even though I grew up, I'm from Pennsylvania. I grew up close to, uh, to Philadelphia, uh, but I, I really like uh, Seattle because there's a lot of uh, a lot of energy, a lot of innovation. Uh, uh, the uh, first it's an important home for uh, information technology. Uh, the wine uh, from uh, Washington State is really good. And it's just sort of a young, very informal, casual. Uh, active, uh, active city. So that, that's probably my favorite thing. Well, John Kerry is going to be your boss now. Is, is my boss. That's right. Yeah, I just boss. started Do you yesterday. think he'll be different from Hillary Clinton? Yeah, um, yes, I uh, think he will be. Uh, even though um, they share many of the same views about what our foreign policy should be, uh, but it will be quite different. Working, working for Hillary Clinton, which is what I did in my last job, was just one of the best experiences ever. She's an incredibly uh, talented and hardworking uh, leader and uh, really had a huge impact on the, uh, on the State Department. Uh, John Kerry, I think he'll be great. He's uh, actually, his parents were in the Foreign Service and, uh, and so he knows the kind of life that we have to lead here in the State Department, uh, and also for many years has been uh, very active with foreign policy issues and uh, knows a lot about foreign policy, so I think he'll be a, a, a terrific leader. I'm hoping to get him to come visit Poland uh, sometime in his, uh, in his first year uh, so our Polish friends can get to know him. Uh, he should uh, come to Krakow. Well, I'll try to work on that. <laughs> and how about Hillary Clinton's future? Are you prospects? Well, uh, she said uh, last week she was just looking forward to getting some sleep uh, because she didn't do uh, a lot of sleeping over the past uh, about four years. And of course, many people think that she would uh, make a very good president. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see what she wants to do. Uh, and uh, I, I think she would make a great president, uh, but obviously she'll have to decide. Do you think the Americans will bear in a woman I think, in America? I think so. I do think so. She, she is the most, uh, of course, when you work as Secretary of State, you're out of politics. And so when you're out of politics, it's easy to be popular. And so she, I think, is the most popular uh, political figure in the United States, man or woman, uh, today. Uh, so depending on how she, what she wants to do, uh, if she decides to run for president, I, 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 think, I think the United States would definitely be ready to uh, we will support her. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we have run out of time. So oh. <laughs> no more questions. Uh, it's been an honor to have you here with us. Uh, we still have uh, uh, two students to talk to you. So we'd like everybody to leave the room as quickly as it is possible because we have to stay here with the ambassador and have an interview. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, to a Polish high school. This is the first Polish high school I have visited. And I'm really excited to be here because uh, one of the graduates of this school, uh, Adam Rothfeld, the former foreign minister, is someone whom I've gotten to know over the years. And uh, I didn't know he went to school here. So the next time I see him, I'm going to uh, be very proud about telling him that I was at his school. Okay. Uh, we are about to our universities. And we'd like to ask uh, what are in how, how they come from government uh, well, uh, we have a couple of different, uh, there are a lot of exchange programs that bring foreign students uh, to the United States. Uh, the most famous one that the uh, U.S. government uh, is associated with is the Fulbright program. And we have uh, one of the largest Fulbright programs uh, in Europe here in Poland, and it brings a lot of uh, Americans to, to research and, and study and, uh, and teach here in Poland, uh, but it also brings a lot of Poles, uh, more than 50 Poles uh, every year uh, to the United States uh, to, to, uh, to pursue their studies there. But every university in the United States uh, has its own financial assistance programs, and uh, students, uh, universities are increasingly interested in bringing more foreign students uh, to the United States because it makes us stronger as a country. It, it helps us 
uh, to the extent that we can have more, a bigger international presence in our universities, it makes our schools a lot, uh, a lot stronger. So uh, between American government programs and these private programs, we're trying to increase the number of foreign students who study in the United States. And as you supported Poland in joining the NATO, what are, in your opinion, the major goals for NATO nowadays? Well, the most important goal for NATO is what it always was, and that is to protect uh, all of the countries who are in it, um, to protect the security of those countries. So the number one goal for NATO in Poland is to make sure that Poland does not have to worry about any other country attacking it or invading it uh, or, 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 or somehow compromising its security. So that's the most important goal. The second most important goal is to spread this security that has been so successful uh, in, uh, in Europe. And so to the extent uh, that we can invite other countries to join NATO who uh, become democracies and who want to contribute to that security, that will be better for all of us in NATO. And to the extent that we can work together in other parts of the world that threaten uh, our security, like in Afghanistan, for example, uh, that's an important goal as well. And are Americans afraid of the collapse of the European Union? Not at all, not at all. I think it's one of the great achievements. Uh, the United States has been a strong supporter of, of a strong European Union because the European Union and the United States share so many interests and values uh, that we very much want the uh, European Union to succeed and to get uh, stronger. The European Union is the biggest trading partner that the United States has. And so when the European Union is having economic problems, that means we are having economic problems too, and we don't want that. So, so we are uh, very supportive of, of an improving uh, economy in the, uh, in the Eurozone and, and throughout uh, the European Union. What do you like most in the Polish culture? I like, uh, I, uh, the most Polish culture, the, what I like the most in Polish culture is really its openness and friendliness and, and hospitality. Uh, here, I, I, I just feel so welcome and so at home here, and I know all of my American colleagues in the embassy and the consulate here feel the uh, feel the same way. And then I just uh, the, the history is just so rich. Yesterday we spent the morning visiting the Wawel uh, complex, the cathedral and the castle. And it's just amazing to see uh, all of these great things from Polish history. I mean, Poland used to be the largest uh, nation in, uh, in in Europe, and uh, really contributed so much to European culture. So. It was really a great experience to see that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for visiting us here. And we would like to see you again in the future in our school. Or in oh, I'd love to come back. All right, well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thanks very much. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. 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 Thank you.